August Hawk was one of the most significant pioneers in automobile history. His limousines and sport convertibles stood for incomparable luxury in their time. The August Hawk Museum in Zwickau serves as a tribute to this unconventional engineer, who was not only the creator of an automobile legend, but whose effects and ingenuity still live on today. Here we have the oldest vehicle in our exhibition, the Hawk Phaeton from 1911 to be exact, with a 3.2 litre engine. This automobile is the visitor's first impression and the prime specimen in the museum's collections. Only 10 years earlier, most everyone still drove in carriages, and it shows with the Hawk Phaeton. Wooden wheels and mud guards are reminiscent of horse and cart. The same goes for the running boards for petrol cans and the gas feed for the headlights and also the fact that the steering wheel was on the right. So the coachman, excuse me, the driver, could always keep an eye on the roadside ditch. The exterior handbrake and gear shift are also more reminiscent of a carriage than a car. And here we have the oldest Audi represented in the museum. It is a Type B which was constructed beginning in the year 1911 in this building. This is the vehicle that August Hawk drove in the famous Alpenfahrt rally. The Alpenfahrt course was the most difficult alpine test of its time. It is comparable to today's World Rally Championship. August Hawk wins the Alpenfahrt in the Type B three times in a row, thus establishing only two years after its founding the company's motorsports reputation for which Audi is still renowned today. But why does Hawk build an Audi? In 1909, the uncompromising engineer leaves his own enterprise because of differences of opinion with his business partners, only to found a new factory in the same year. But the fledgling automobile company has one fundamental problem. It has no name, the right to the name Hawk still resting with the original company. A fitting name is imperative. But August Hawk and his old friend and financier Franz Fikenscher cannot think of an appropriate moniker. Fortunately, Fikenscher's ten-year-old son Heinrich, a studious pupil of Latin, has the saving idea. Audi? Hawk is the imperative form of the German verb to listen, and its Latin equivalent is Audi. At the beginning of the 20th century, automobile construction means a lot of manual labor and heavy machinery. In the 1920s, the machines are still being operated using transmission, electric individual drive not coming into use until the beginning of the 1930s. The quantity of vehicles produced only amount to a few hundred a year. Nonetheless, August Hawk adopts from the beginning the highest quality and technical innovations for both the Hawk brand and later for Audi as well. Vorsprung durch Technik in its early stages. We are now in the mechanical assembly, the heart of a factory in those days. This is where everything was turned, milled, machined, sawed and stamped. These are the types of machines that created the proverbial precision at Hawk and Audi in those days, producing with an accuracy of up to a thousandth millimeter. That was the prerequisite in order to create motors of Hawk quality. Motors that were renowned for their silence. Motors that didn't even cause a five-mark coin set on edge to fall over when idling. Hawk automobiles are of superlative quality. From 1927, the vehicles are only built with eight and 12 cylinders setting new standards in the fields of motor mechanics and performance. They are among the most comfortable cars, never skimping on sides. Instead of using conventional automobile designers, artists provide the designs for the vehicles in order to assure that Hawk saloon cars and cabriolets are the most beautiful automobiles of their time. And even the trade prices that today would equate to around 150 to 200,000 euros, as with this Hawk 853 convertible, would not keep Hawk from dominating the luxury car market in Germany in the 1930s with a market share of 55%.
This is a petrol station from the period of the 20s and 30s, a very important time. Audi was already transferring its steering from the right to the left side in 1921 and was thus a pioneer in Germany. But other important technical highlights as well, like the oil filter, which contributed substantially to the life of the engine, and various other innovations were developed. On the whole, however, things were on the decline by the middle of the 1920s. After the Great Depression began in 1929, there was no longer a market for big engines and automobiles. This, of course, led to ever more companies being in desperate states and to the founding of the Alto Union here in Saxonia. The merging of DKW, Vandera, Audi and Hawk into the Alto Union fortified these brands that would otherwise not have been able to survive the depression. Strategically intelligent, each brand served its own segment. DKW built small cars, Vandera mid-range vehicles, Audi assumed the executive mid-range and Hawk provided for the luxury segment. And it pays off. By 1937, every fourth vehicle in Germany is an Auto Union product. But the days of the limousines and convertibles with their sophisticated 8 and 12 cylinder engines are numbered. Hawke senses that an era was coming to an end that probably is never going to come back. The Great Depression in the late 20s is just the first drawback. The upcoming World War II marks the beginning of the end of an automobile era. With the end of World War II came the end of the glorious history of the Auto Union, with its four brands, Audi, DKW, Hoch and Vandera. At the August Hoch Museum, we are of course delighted that the Audi brand was continued in West Germany and was revitalized in 1965, setting off on the path to renewed success. As is well known, this brand is celebrating its 100th birthday this year, and we would like to offer our congratulations on this occasion. With a sense for innovation, the courage to take risks, and an entrepreneurial spirit, August Hawk left his marks in the automobile history. Marks that consequently culminate in the premium brand of Audi. Hoch is a legend today, and legends, as they say, never die.